I'm going to give you some settings that will act as a starting point for you when you're starting to take surf photos. I'll build on some of the concepts we talk about here throughout the course, but this is really, really simply for you to just get your basic settings, program into your camera so you can get to the beach and get some, some good results, start getting sharp photos, hopefully, that will do the job um, and that you can build on and start making creative choices around. So these are the basic, quick settings that I think you should start with. So I'm gonna base this on my Sony A6000 and A6500 cameras, because that's what I use day to day for surf photography, but they're all equivalent settings for other brands like Nikon, Canon. They all have very similar settings to these that you can choose. So firstly, mode. I would go for, and again, this is for 90% of the situations, you're gonna to wanna to change this in, down the line. But for basic start off settings, go for shutter priority mode. So that's um, a little S on your mode dial on Sony and Nikon and a TV on the mode dial for Canon cameras. So you wanna set your mode to shutter priority. Then you wanna set your shutter speed to one one thousandth of a second. That's gonna ensure that you freeze the action. Then um, your camera will automatically set the aperture for you because you're in shutter priority mode. And you wanna set your ISO to auto ISO. That's your basic exposure triangle settings. So you want to now um, sort out the focus. You wanna to go to continuous autofocus. And again, there's a few different names for that depending on your brand, but for, for Sony it's continuous autofocus. And you want to select the center focus point. Again, it's just a rule of thumb, so I'll talk about this in a lot more detail later. So you've got center focus point, continuous autofocus, shutter priority, thousandth of a second, auto ISO. There's some other settings that you want to change on your camera which are more general. So what I'm going to go through is a good starting point for surf photography. I would go for RAW plus JPEG. That's the type of image that your camera captures. Um, I won't go into detail on why that is, but that is a really great place to start for a number of different reasons. Then image size. With a Sony camera in particular, you can then set what size of JPEG image the camera saves. And I go for small. And that's because the reason I have JPEGs in there as well is so that I can transfer them quickly off the camera into my phone, do some quick edits and post them online or send them, more likely send them to the person who's in the photo or family and friends, whoever you've taken a photo of surfing. So by going raw plus JPEG, you're getting raw file, which is the one that you want to edit um, and produce prints and anything high resolution um, you're going to be editing the raw file and outputting a, probably a JPEG from that. Um, but the JPEG, raw plus JPEG, captures two files for each shot that you take. The JPEG is just for zapping quickly to your phone. So I choose small, which reduces the file size, makes it easier to transfer it from your camera to your phone. Simple as that. The next one that I would change is the drive mode. So that's the burst mode of the camera, how fast it takes photos when you hold down the button. And I would change that to the highest speed you've got. So that's high plus on the Sony cameras. Um, and that just ensures that when you do hold the shutter down, it'll use the full fastest speed that you can, take as, ma as many photos as it can, but until you let go of the, your finger. So with the A6500 in particular, it has a really big image buffer, so it can save lots of those photos and keep going for a long, long time. Longer than you'll ever need for surf photography, in my experience. The A6000 and other cameras have a smaller buffer so that you have to be a bit more thoughtful about how long you hold down the shutter for because it can just stop and freeze up because it can't transfer the data quickly from quickly enough from the sensor to your SD card, whatever memory card you're using. So I would um, yeah go for the highest speed and then one of the skills you will learn fairly quickly is to kind of moderate how much you press and hold down that button and what you'll really try and do is, is capture the height of the action in any situation. So you'll do small burst, small burst, small burst. If I turn this on, you can hear the sounds, so it give you an idea. So, okay, so someone's taking off and that was the bottom turn. They've trimming along the wave. I'm, cap I'm, I'm holding focus on the, on the person. That was a, t that was a cutback. <laughs> and then another bottom turn up to the top. 
and that was an air and then that was them landing the air at the end so you get the picture by by focusing on just the height of the action and doing a little burst to eat in each point when you think the most exciting moment is happening and the only way you're going to know that is by watching surfing and, ex and, and through experience basically but you'll pick it up fairly quickly um, and that means first of all you're going to have far fewer images to go through than if you just just um, did that for the whole wave no one's going to want to look at that if you go if you look at any surf magazine there won't be usually on very occasionally there there is a, a long sequence but usually there's one photo of each wave maybe two or three but that's it so you it's rare to need any more than a couple of shots of a wave basically the problem is you don't know which shot's going to be best until after the, the fact so you need to capture each little fraction of the wave which is interesting and you need to do two or three shots of each part of the wave which is going to be interesting and then you just pick the best one and it makes it a lot easier to review your photos afterwards and it makes sure you don't run out of buffer on the camera and end up missing a shot which would have been the best one of the, the whole lot so yeah stick it drive mode slash burst mode put it in the highest fastest possible um, there's some cameras which um there there are really really fast modes which will lock focus um at the start on the first frame and then because it doesn't have to auto focus after that it enables the camera to take it even faster i'd avoid those modes i'd go for the one before that <laughs> the fastest you can do with continuous autofocus that's the mode to go for that's pretty much all of the, the basic ones on the sony camera the 6500 i would activate bluetooth mode as well you're probably going to want to pick up a few spare batteries because you, you never know when you need another battery but if you activate bluetooth mode use a bit more battery but it enables you to synchronize with your phone and use your phone's gps um, um, satellite connection to plot the the gps co um, coordinates against the images that you take on your sony camera which is a godsend when you're going back through your foot your photos maybe not that day because you're going to remember where you were that day but in six months time if you want to quickly look on a map to see oh i was at that spot i wonder the conditions look good for spot x so let's see what i did last time maybe i want to try something similar or try something totally different and you can find it really easily using the map rather than going back and trying to remember when it was you're at that spot so that's my basic quick start settings um, for surf photography and as you go through this course you'll notice that i, I do explain uh, different settings for different different lenses different types of photo and various other aspects too but that should get you going nice and quickly if you just want to run out the door and set your camera up